without the pipe in your mouth. You sound more like this, more normal. Um, if you're with good buddies, they might not mind you talking to them like that. But if you're in a public setting, maybe don't. <laughs> like Just to be safe. Like cigar lounges. Uh, most of the cigar lounges I know fully allow pipes because that's what you're doing with the pipe. You're smoking, you're in a social setting. Yep. Um, yeah, matter of fact, I don't think I know any cigar lounge that doesn't allow doesn't. you. Yeah, in fact, we both were just at a cigar lounge um, two days ago. Mm-hmm. And if you get onto my Instagram, I posted a couple pics uh, on there of our experience there. And there was somebody in there who was smoking a pipe. Oh, yeah. And it was a nice looking pipe that he had. Like, yeah. not too expensive one. Which I, I'd i second that, what you said, Brant, about... Uh, getting a, a fairly cheaper pipe especially if it's your first one because if you smoke it and then you decide oh mm, this isn't really, this isn't for, really me. for me i don't you're like not it wasting a lot of money off yeah. of it yep that being said I, I probably wouldn't suggest going out and buying a corn cob pipe on your first go around right that, those, that's just me personally those do tend to be slightly cheaper um, uh, i would say if you're getting a pipe for the first time stick in the 30 to 50 dollar range if not dabble maybe a little bit down closer to the 20 dollar range yeah um that being said also keep in mind it is going to be a cheap pipe yeah um, also like if you're going fishing that's what i would suggest getting a corn cob pipe right. because nothing would be worse than having like a nice you know <laughs> Three hundred dollar pipe with you, Getting and all of a sudden dropped in the water. Exactly. I mean, if I had a pipe like that, or if I some... brought one of my pipes and I dropped it in the water, I'm diving in for it. I'm getting wet for that pipe. Accidentally spilling some of your uh, power bait on there. Oh yeah. So like, Have honestly, enough. get something super cheap, yeah. corn cob pipe. Yeah. Um, I would also stuff say. Like that. I would also say that uh, corn cob pipes would probably be a good uh, walking pipe as well. Yeah. Because they tend to be a little bit lighter. They're not quite as heavy. Exactly. They're very light. I have never seen a corn cob pipe that was heavy at all. Um, I even looked at that one corn cob pipe, which was like practically a whole cob (laughs) of corn, where they cut off pretty much one tip, bottom tip, to have a flat end. Right. And drilled a hole down through it, and it was kind of a deep bowl. That one was still light, really light right. cob yeah, it was. pipe. Yeah. Um, uh, with corn cob pipes, though, I would say be careful of the really, really tiny ones. Um, I did purchase one of those once, and I found it to not be very good. The stem was so short, and the mouthpiece was so close to the bowl that it was just hot air you were sucking in every time and it built up a ton of condensation inside the stem if you do get a short pipe though um that being said that that's going to happen with really short pipes yep um especially really dinky ones there's that one that uh, we saw over there they call it the the french vest pipe right which is really unique look it's a collapsible pipe it kind of looks like a slightly flattened egg Mm -hmm. uh, lengthwise flattened egg and actually has a fold not a fold out uh, a twist out uh, stem and it's supposed to like fit in your like really small yeah it's just supposed to fit in your breast pocket of either your vest or your suit coat and uh, I think I'm more burnt out in this yeah that's what I am burnt out so I'm going to fill up mine and I'm going to tell you another way of, of filling it up um, I call it kind of the lazy man stuff, <laughs> and it's what I tend to do a little bit more, just because it, it tends to be a lot quicker than that. Yeah. And um, that being said, I'd probably suggest doing what Brant told you, how to stuff it, if it's your first time smoking. Right. Um, that being said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to scoop out the ash instead of knocking the ash. Right. Um, talk to him about knocking it and and stuff about cleaning process of right. your pipe. Well, even while you're smoking your pipe... Um, once you've gotten into it a little ways, you will have a layer of ash and you can either gently tap it either with the heel of your hand or maybe on the heel of a shoe or some other 
surface that's not going to scratch and ruin your bowl to kind of knock out that loose ash on the top. Or you can take your little spade tool that most of the time comes with your tamping tool and kind of just lightly scrape out that loose ash and, and dump it out. And see, like with me, I have I usually have my cowboy boots with me. Right. And I have a uh, what's called a wood bottom heel. And that's why I usually tap mine off on is that wood bottom because it's a nice solid bottom. And if you're tapping, that's why I usually suggest is find something that's kind of solid on there. Right. You don't want to hit it hard because you can actually damage the bowl, damage the stem. Just a nice kind of solid tap and it gets it out. Right. And something else I was going to say too is if you have your own way, your own process of filling and tamping a pipe then and it's effective for you do it stick with it that's totally fine you don't have to by any means follow a specific pattern or process with it if it works for you that's fine kind of something we mentioned last week there's those cigar snobs pipe snobs out there who might tell the tell you that you have to do it this certain way every time you do it but if you have your own way and it's fast and effective and efficient that's totally fine go for it don't worry about what anybody else says you enjoy your pipe the way that you want exactly and if anybody tells you otherwise you can tell them to fuck off directly from us we if you come up with one of those guys and they say and he says oh you're you're filling it wrong or you're lighting it wrong just tell them well tim and brant told me to fuck off (laughs) yeah told you to fuck off yeah okay so what i'm doing uh, I call it the lazy man. Uh, I usually do it a lot for walks. Um, and it's kind of a similar process where you just kind of uh, stuff it in um, that way. But instead of actually pulling it out of the bag, you keep it in the bag or in the, the container. Um, it works a lot better with, like, uh, rolled flakes than anything else. So what you do is you put your uh, the bowl of your pipe into the bag... And, um, scoop and it kind out. of scoop a little bit out. Yep. Um, I try not to scoop it completely out. I just kind of keep it in, hey, scoop you, it down a bit. Do you want to try a bowl of this, or do you want to keep going with well, that? I'm going to keep Hall? going with the Carter Hall. All right. like, uh, I love the smell of your stuff, but I'm going to commit to this Carter Hall, uh, mainly because it's one of those things where it's like, it, it's good, it's a good starter. Um, me personally, I probably won't buy it uh, again. I just bought this for this review just to try it out and see what you guys like it. Um, me, I personally like my aromatics and my flavors. So I'll, I'm probably going for the next... It's probably going to take me a, a few weeks. To get through that. To get through that. Yeah. Um, I'm probably not going to smoke it again on a review. But like for my walks and that, I'm probably going to fill it up and, and go for it. Um, right. So what I do is I start stuffing it in... Um, kind of like if you're stuffing in a turkey you want to try to get it in the bottom of the bowl and that uh keep in mind uh as you're stuffing it in keeping it in the bag do your dry draws so that you can see how how tight of a draw you're going to get right try not to get it too tight you still want some airflow otherwise uh your flame or or the uh the embers will die out exactly because it's it's like any fire nor for a fire to survive, it needs, needs oxygen. oxygen. Right. And that's how it's getting it. It's not because you're blowing through it. Uh, if you're blowing through it, you're get, they're getting carbon dioxide, which they're still getting oxygen, but it's not the, the oxygen that it's needing. That's why you drag into it. And once you get that desired uh, draw out of it, then you can go ahead and take your bowl out. Um, you might have stuff... Um, sticking out of the bowl and that's just fine I'm going to close up my pouch here real quick (laughs) this is a heavy pipe yeah yeah, church wardens are a lot harder to uh, hold in your mouth Mm -hmm. without a hand Um, if you're going to try to walk with a church warden try getting a straight pipe first Um, I doubt that you'd want to walk with a uh, church warden though um, and then you'll do the same thing as uh, the other method, the stuffing method at the very end, is you want a kind of a nice firm push into it, 
and twist it. So you're getting that same twist. Um, get a nice look for it. Ah, there you go. And then what I'm using is kind of a big lighter. We actually got these lighters uh, when we got the pipes. It, it came with a pipe, so it was kind of a neat deal. Uh, but lighten it up with a, a big lighter or uh, a match uh, is just simple. You just get the flame going on your lighter. Uh, maybe it's really cold. Get that flame going and then drag in so that you're getting that flame into your bowl. Uh, make sure you get the flame actually touching the tobacco as well. Yeah. Um, this particular part of the process, the lighting up process, isn't quite as involved and complicated as the uh, filling and tamping part of it. There you go. Looks like there you got you it go. going pretty nice now. That's the look I'm looking for. Yep, Matt. there you go. Nice red cherry color on the top there. Mm -hmm. And just keep on puffing. Um, this one, you don't really have to use the stamper as much. Not like the, the other method. After you light it, you tend to want to stamp it down so it actually gets in. This one, you just pretty much light, and it should get everything lit up there. Um, out of all the tobaccos that you've smoked... Uh, which ones has been like your favorite so far? The one that you kind of have your go-to? Um, I still personally like the Black Cavendish. Um, but there have been some other special blends that I've really enjoyed. Uh, this new one, this one that I'm having right now, this Blackbeard, uh, has definitely shot up to uh, really close to the top of my list. This has been awesome. Um... There's been a couple other ones that I've enjoyed um, that are actually uh, Lord of the Rings themed. Uh, Shire Weed, which you can actually find in several different places. It's mm -hmm. not just uh, special to one shop only. Mm -hmm. And out of the Shire Weed, I've had Old Toby and Hobbit Leaf. And those both I've, I've really enjoyed. Those have been really nice. And I just barely got one from them. Um, it's called uh, Dragon, Dragon Smoke. Smoke. Yeah. And that one's pretty good. It has a type of tobacco called... Uh, it's Fire Cured. Fire Cured. Yeah. It's called Lacadish. Lacka... Starts with an L. Something. Sounds like Lacadish something. Uh, I can't remember, but it's a, it's a Fire Cured leaf, and it gives it a really nice, smoky, earthy flavor. Almost like you're around a campfire. Yeah. And you have kind of like that mild campfire smell to it. Uh, but yeah the ones I, I tend to go to um, I like my aromas like I said uh, the first one that I got was a pretty good one uh, but cocoa then I kind of moved right? away from that cocoa cream yeah cocoa cream um, cocoa cream was a really good one a lot of vanilla taste uh, it was a sweet smoke as yeah it was through. a good one to start out with um, and that one was just through that it was that store's blend yeah um and then you discovered. Then I discovered your next it was whiskey. Yep. And it, whiskey flavored stuff is phenomenal. Oh, if, yeah. if you're a person that loves whiskey, like anything that's a bourbon or even the, the finer stuff like Irish whiskeys or scotches, right. it, you would love whiskey flit or whiskey tobacco. Yeah. And whiskey you can get in any, any store. Uh, it's usually the store's blend. Uh, whatever the store uses as a, uh, a blend for that. Um, but as of late, um, I've actually gone with something that's called butterscotch. Buttered. Uh, buttered the one that rum, I got right? is buttered rum. Yeah, buttered um, rum. The other one that I found was buttered beer. Right. But nevertheless, a lot of them will have that butterness to it. Butter, butter, butter. Right. And those are really, really sweet tobacco. Really sweet in taste. Um and also a lot of butterscotch notes because I really love butterscotch. I love butterscotch too. Um, and then if it's really cheap, I usually get a cheap tobacco for smoke or for walking because I don't feel as bad burning through it a lot. Lately, you've um, really that been one I go the, with uh, red cap. What's red cap? Yeah. Uh, I've heard of other reviewers 
reviewing uh, Red Cap Tobacco uh, and not liking it as.